So, Shafani, you were saying that you actually worked in radio from an early age. Can you talk a little bit about that? That's right. Well, I worked on the radio at the age of 12. What basically happened was that I used to call up the radio station quite a lot, answer questions and quizzes and all that sort of stuff. And uh, one of the announcers thought my voice was nice and so wanted me to come and work for him. Without realizing that I was 12 years old, he called me in and had me on. So, were you a little scared? I mean, you're only 12. It was very daunting at first. So the first couple of days, I had no idea what was going on. There was a massive microphone in front of my face, and I was told to make this show fun and interesting. So yes, it was very daunting. Did you have any prep, or did they just stick you in front of the mic and have you react? No, actually, there, were, there, was no prompt, but there were no prompts. It was all up to me. I had to come up with stuff on the spot, which was quite easy, really, because the topics were simple. It was m mainly about music. Oh, like, like teen stuff? Yeah, exactly. Or anything that people called up and talked about. It's a very, very childish stuff, but mainly geared at teenagers. Uh, how did your parents feel about it? Very proud of me, obviously. At the age of 12, their daughter was a DJ. Uh, what could be better than that? So they really enjoyed it. I remember they would listen to it every single time, record it, and then listen to it over and over again when they could. Oh, that's fantastic. So uh, were you like a little celebrity at your school? I ended up becoming one. A lot of my friends also did the same recording of my voice on the radio. It, w it was a big thing to be a radio person and being only 12. So my friends thought it was absolutely fantastic and they would take it to school and quite often play it around. So yeah, I ended up getting a celebrity status. So when you were young and you were this DJ, did you envision yourself of being a DJ for a long time? Actually, no, I hadn't. I, I really enjoyed it, had a lot of fun, but it was a hobby. It was never something I wanted to do as, as a profession. So in the future, if you had a, a, a child and they wanted to do this, would you encourage them to do it? I absolutely would, because if they enjoy it, and they enjoy it so much that they want to take it up as a career, why not? With me, it was a hobby. Now, what about podcasts? Like, would you encourage young people to maybe have their own podcast? I think that's a fantastic idea. I think it's really good to be able to express yourself. And through podcasts, they can do exactly that. Hey, Warren. Hey, how's it going? Good. I thought today we could talk about childhood dreams. When you were 10 years old, what did you want to be when you grew up? Right. Uh, well, actually, it's a little embarrassing. I, I wanted to be a truck driver. I thought it'd be really neat because you can just travel around everywhere and see different places all the time, and you're always on the move. Uh, but, you know, I, I didn't become a truck driver. No, you didn't become a truck driver. Uh, why, why is that? When did your dream change? Well, uh, probably when I was around 15, I... I thought it would be a lot cooler to be a rock star. Rock star? Yeah, a rock star. I, I really liked uh, electric guitar at the time, and um, a lot of my friends were into music as well. So I, I didn't actually start a band, but uh, I played with a lot of different people, and um, sometimes I would play with some bands, but I never really stuck to it. But I, I did keep playing guitar, and I ended up getting pretty good. What kind of rock star did you want to be? Did you want to be like a heavy metal rock star or a grunge rock star? Uh, well, I guess versatile would be the word. I, I like playing a lot of heavy stuff and uh, maybe uh, maybe some, some folk music as well. So kind of uh, eclectic. So maybe a hippie rock star? Yeah, maybe a hippie. So then when you were 20, did you still want to be a rock star? No, I didn't, but I still played guitar then. I, I actually wanted to be a classical guitarist by then. Okay. What, what is classical guitar? Well, it's funny you say that because it's not just classical music. Uh, classical guitar is, um, for one thing, it's a type of guitar. It, it has uh, nylon strings, not the steel strings like you see on a folk guitar. Okay. And there's different styles you can play on it, uh, like Spanish music or flamenco, uh, South American music, some classical music like Beethoven and things like that, or Baroque music like Does like it Bach. have a singer with it? Or? Uh, sometimes there are singers. Usually uh, 
it's solo, uh, but you can play some chamber music with with other instruments as well. And uh, yeah, I played some some pieces with uh, vocalists, but it wouldn't be pop music. And so now you're older. Mm -hmm. uh, are, did your dream come true? Did you become a classical guitarist? I did, uh, but I actually decided to change my dream after I became a classical guitarist. So what's your dream now? Well, my dream now is to become a, a university professor. Oh, and are you making steps to achieve that dream? I am, actually. I'm working at a university now, not as a professor, uh, as, as a part-time lecturer, but uh, I'm taking some courses and studying hard and hoping that my future will will, uh, will allow me to become a professor. Okay. Well, unless you change your dream again, I bet you'll achieve your dream more. So good luck. Oh, great. Thank you. So, Lindsay, what about your dreams? What, what did you want to be when you were 10 years old? Well, when I was 10 years old, I wasn't very realistic, but I knew I wanted to be very powerful. So I thought the dream job would be uh, Wonder Woman. She can fly anywhere. Uh, she has the powers to do good and to help everyone. And she's very uh, badass. So I wanted to be just like her. Unfortunately, wow. it didn't come true, as I'm not Wonder Woman right now. No, I can see that, but it seems like you had a, a good imagination as a kid. But I guess that, that probably changed as you got older. What about when you were 15? Well, then when I was 15, I still wanted to be very powerful um, and very strong, but I had a more realistic idea of what I wanted to be. But I still didn't know a lot about the world, so I just wanted to be a very powerful businesswoman. I had no idea what kind of business, and I had no idea what that actually meant, but I wanted to wear an all-black suit and have a briefcase and go to work in a nice office and drive a nice car and do something that was very powerful. But I had no idea really what a powerful businesswoman does. Oh, well, that seems like a pretty good dream for a 15-year-old. But I guess you probably had a better idea when you were 20, so what about then? So when I was 20, then I still wanted to be powerful and strong. I guess you can see the common theme here. Uh, but then I had even more realistic idea of actual real professions. So at that time, I was quite uh, social. I really enjoyed going to parties. Uh, and I was living in New York at the time. So I thought the perfect job for me would be a public relations specialist. Uh, I thought I could be one of those people that plans parties or um, does handles the PR, the publicity for celebrities. Uh, I had a dream of maybe working for Madonna or working for a famous TV show and handling all, all their publicity representation. Oh, well, that's great. It seems like you, you had a better idea by the time you were 20. But I guess you probably have some dreams now even. So what kind of dreams do you have now? Well, then... Uh, when I was 20, I was quite uh, egotistical. I just wanted, only thought about myself and how I could have more money and be more powerful. But then something changed when I started traveling and seeing the world where I decided that I'd rather have a job that does something good for the world and gives back to the community and to the people. Um, so now I'm a teacher and I really enjoy that, the idea of making a difference in, in people's lives. And in the future, maybe when I get older, I hope to start an animal shelter so that um, when animals are left on the street or abandoned, they can come to my shelter and I can provide a happy home for them. Wow, that's a great vision for the future. Thanks. So we're talking about camp today. Uh, did you ever go to camp when you were a kid? I did. I usually went to cub camp, you know, like Boy Scouts. Okay. Was it during the summer? Yeah, it would always be in the summer. And was it for a week or a month or? I, I can't recall. It probably was about a week. About a week? What would you do at cub camp? Oh, we do different things. Um, one thing I remember is uh, archery. Archery. Yeah, like bows and arrows. So we would have uh, a target and uh, we, we would practice trying to hit the target, and I was really bad at it. I, <laughs> I remember always, um, it's quite difficult, and I would hurt my, my arm okay. with, with, the, with the bow. 
Um, but then after the, we were trying to get the target, I remember we did distance as well. And I was actually pretty good at that. I, I figured out how to get a long, uh, long shot away. And I, I think I, I might be lying, but I think I, I maybe got the longest shot than anyone else. Oh, wow. Yeah. Congratulations. Um, okay, besides archery, were there other games you play or sports you did? Yeah, well, we would uh, learn how to uh, canoe and uh, we'd, we'd swim and uh, we'd go on hikes. We, we'd learn how to navigate through the forest with a compass. Okay. Things like that. Did you learn how to start fire without matches? We did, yeah. We would uh, use um, two sticks, rub them together, start a fire. Wow. Yeah. Uh, what would you guys do at night? Would you, um, play games or have campfires? Yeah, we'd always have a campfire at night. Uh, we'd sing some songs like Kumbaya and, uh, yeah, put on some skits and tell ghost stories. But my favorite thing to do at the campfire was, uh, roast marshmallows. Oh, that's the best. Yeah. I'd, I'd spend hours trying to find the perfect stick to, mm. to carve and uh, roast marshmallows on. And sometimes we'd even make the, the chocolate s'mores with the marshmallows. Uh, so that food was good. How was the other food? Um, I don't have any memories of it being good. So I don't think it was very good. We, we would all eat together in, in a, a mess hall, much like yourself. And uh, actually, I remember getting really sick one time. And uh, my parents had to come and pick me up, and I think I, I got a bit of food poisoning. Oh, wow, from yeah. the food in yeah. the Cub Scout camp? Yeah, wow, right. okay. Um, final question. So you were away from your family, right? Mm -hmm. Was that hard or easy? Oh, it was It was easy. I, I remember feeling a little freer and uh, more independent away from my parents, less rules, less regulations. You weren't homesick at all? I, no, I never did get homesick. Even when my parents came to pick me up that time when I was sick, I, I really didn't want to go home. Oh, too yeah. bad you got food poisoning. Yeah, yeah. Okay, thanks, Warren. Lindsay, we're both teachers, and, you know, sometimes our, our students uh, go off to camp over, over the summer break. Did you ever go to camp when you were younger? I did go to camp. The camp I went to is called Pilgrim Pines. Oh, what was that like? Uh, it was great. Uh, it was one week away from my family, and each person got to take care of an animal. Uh, some people took care of horses, some people took care of sheep, uh, but I got the lucky task of taking care of Xanadu the llama. <laughs> what was that like? Oh, it was awesome. I, when I was a kid, my favorite animal was a llama, so um, that's why we looked into this camp to begin with, and uh, I had to brush it. Uh, and I had to feed the llama. And it was such a sweet llama that uh, I really fell in love with it. And every day I'd wake up, feed the llama, and brush it. And then uh, in the afternoon I'd also come and visit the llama. Xanadu was his name. But um, a couple of times he got mad. I'm not exactly, I can't remember why actually he was upset. But uh, when llamas are mad, uh, do you know what they do? I don't know. They actually spit. Uh, oh, really? Yeah, and you have to be, and then they get, if they spit at you, that means they're really upset and they can be dangerous. I mean, I was only 10 at the time, so the llama was a lot bigger than me. Mm -hmm. uh, and one time it, it spit at me and the spit got stuck in my hair and it was this really thick, gross, uh, mucusy spit. Oh. Um, and that really uh, struck an image in my mind. I can't ever kind of forget that llama spitting at me. And then after, I think... For a day, I was afraid of the llama, um, and then my counselor, my camp counselor, who was in charge of all the children, had a talk with me and told me how you know sometimes llamas get mad just like people get mad, mm -hmm. and that I need to forgive the llama, and uh, I did. And then the next day, I went and uh, and fed the llama and brushed llama, and everything was back to normal. But it was a really good experience to learn how to take care of a pet. Mm -hmm. Um, and good experience to be away from my family for the first time. Um, so I guess there were other kids at the camp too. Did you guys all eat together? Uh, yeah, we had the like a mess hall they called it, which is basically cafeteria. The food was disgusting. I remember <laughs> losing a lot of weight when I came home, mm -hmm. and my mom would uh, send me packages of chocolate and cookies, and I would eat it all. Uh, but yes, we all ate together. This like gross cafeteria slob food. Uh, like sloppy joe for uh, 
lunch right. or you know just imagine like turkey and gravy for dinner but the turkey was like, kind of a blue color or something mm-hmm. everything was just a little bit gross but and at one time we had a food fight and that was absolutely <laughs> amazing this one kid get, got upset the other kid threw some mashed potatoes and the next thing you know turkey's flying mashed potatoes flying everything everyone's getting involved and uh that was really fun